Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Kill shot Trump just made his final decision on Sheriff Joe that is making lefties cry. All this whole last week the media has been running leaked stories about how Donald Trump was holding a rally in Arizona to pardon Sheriff Joe Arpaio. Well, the White House just finally gave their answer on the pardon and now the media is in a hellstorm trying to cover their tracks because President Trump will not be pardoning Sheriff Joe Arpaio tonight. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders told a bunch of reporters on Air Force One today. There will be no discussion of that today at any point and no action will be taken on that front at any point today. So, there you have it. Sarah Huckabee seems to know what she is talking about, too, so probably not gonna be any big surprises now. In case you were curious, former Sheriff Joe was arrested last month on contempt of court for failing to follow a 2011 court order demanding he stop racial profiling practices while sheriff. He is currently serving part of his six-month jail term. Even Arpaio seemed to cast doubt on a possible pardon last week when he told the press. As far as the situation on a pardon, I didn't ask for it, but I will accept it if he does do it. This president understands what I've been going through. There aren't many politicians around believe me. I learned that real quick over this situation. You don't see anybody next to me and I've endorsed so many people. Sheriff Joe seems like a fine guy, however, it's probably smart for the president to avoid the level of controversy just to end a six-month jail term. If it was years in prison, it may be different, but Trump is a smart guy and he will make the move that's best for our country right now. Help share this big news out to everyone to correct the media's fake stories and show Trump the American people support him despite the MSM. Moments after Afghan speech, Trump sent a secret weapon to the Middle East and the media wants it buried. You can't deny President Trump knows how to play the game. Whether it's business, politics, national security, or wrangling the media, no other POTUS in history has endured and survived this level of scrutiny. With that being said, it shouldn't surprise anyone to know that President Trump has a few tricks of his own for the perpetually biased and unflinching media. While the world was focused on a solar eclipse and his first major national security address on Monday, President Trump was quietly sending White House adviser Jared Kushner on a trip to the Persian Gulf and Israel. But Kushner wasn't alone, as Deputy National Security Adviser Dinah Powell and Middle East envoy Jason Greenblatt rounded at the traveling American delegation. So why send White House representatives overseas at the same time as your nationally televised address? Maybe it's a way for President Trump to prove that actions speak louder than words. It's one thing to make speeches about well-laid plans, but Trump has proven he is a man of decisive, goal-oriented action. This administration wants to end global terror and create a long-standing peace for all of the Middle East. This sentiment was seconded by White House officials, who explained the purpose of Kushner's trip as a means to focus on the path to substantive Israeli-Palestinian peace talks combating extremism, the situation in Gaza, including how to ease the humanitarian crisis there, as well as to explore any economic steps that could be taken. It's about time we had a leader who can multitask. With so much facing our nation, you can't overstate the importance of thinking outside the box. That's exactly how Trump won the presidency and exactly how he's going to make America great again. This is Kushner's third trip to the Middle East and it looks like President Trump is establishing long-term relationships that will benefit everyone involved. When it comes to protecting our national safety and building long-standing goals for peace, there is no better advocate than President Trump. If you're proud of your president, share this like crazy to spread the word before it's buried by the media. Sources, Politico.com
Camping World tells Trump voters to shop elsewhere, NASCAR legend makes them regret that. CEOs have started distancing themselves from President Trump. It's sad. They must not like half of the country. Some have attacked Trump in the media, some have dropped out of his councils, but one, in particular, said something really bad, Camping World. Camping World invited its customers to take their RV and outdoor needs elsewhere. That was a huge mistake, look what they got hit with immediately. Famous NASCAR driver Mark Martin did exactly as they requested and cancelled $150,000 order with the company. Good idea. Camping World shouldn't have done that. Update, Mark Martin later updated his stance on the company after speaking with Marcus Limonis, the CEO of the company. Here was his statement. After a call from Marcus Limonis, today regret my tweet yesterday. I believe many articles about his statement were misrepresented. Good job, Camping World. You realize that Trump supporters make up more than half of the nation. Let's show all of America what happens when you mess with Trump Nation. Share this with three of your Trump voting friends. Comment don't mess with Trump Nation so that the rest of these companies know. We voted Trump and we won't back down. Right after Trump's Afghanistan speech, Paul Ryan did something to save Trump's presidency. Last night was President Trump's big announcement on the Afghanistan war. However, the biggest shocker of all was what Paul Ryan did for the president in his CNN town hall right after Trump's speech. Speaker Ryan promised he would not back Democrat attempts to censure President Trump. When one of the participants pushed Ryan to tell if he would support Nancy Pelosi's congressional censure of Trump over Charlottesville, he gave an unequivocal no followed by. It should not be about that the president. This is not about Republicans or Democrats. This shouldn't be about some vote in Congress or some partisan issue. This is so much more important than that. This issue speaks to humanity, our country, our society, our culture. Every single one of us needs to unify against this repulsive, repugnant, vile bigotry. That is so important. Well, I may not be a Paul Ryan fan, per se, but he is 100% right. The left wants to make this a political issue when the real issue is the fact that hate groups from both sides clashed with weapons in Charlottesville. That is not a Republican issue, that's an American issue. Although, it is worth saying that true conservatives could never support Antifa, neo-Nazis, KKK, white supremacy or any of them because we believe in small government and freedoms for all. Those groups are technically all left-wing for that reason. But, semantics aside, it's great to have Ryan standing up for the president. Show him some real thanks so others join in by sharing this out everywhere. Trump just slipped something genius into Afghanistan speech that is driving liberals mad. Monday night was President Donald Trump's big announcement on a new strategy in Afghanistan to win the war once and for all. However, what really drove the Dems up the walls was what Trump slipped into the beginning of his speech. President Trump said that true patriots don't have room for prejudice, bigotry, or hate. Our president said beautiful, unifying words to our torn country including. When we open our hearts to patriotism, there is no room for prejudice, no place for bigotry and no tolerance for hate. Loyalty to our nation demands loyalty to one another. Love for America requires love for all of its people. And yet, for some reason, there were those on the left who criticized the president's words to the nation. Over at CNN, Don Lemon got into an argument with his panel when they all disagreed with him after he claimed Trump's remarks were insensitive. Through some twisted logic, Lemon tried to explain that Trump should have had a press conference for a unifying speech and not mentioned it in the Afghanistan war announcement. Well, now he can do both if he wants. Seriously, there is no pleasing some people. Still, most rational folks will hear the president's words and be moved to see the truth with their own eyes. Help make that happen by sharing this out everywhere.
Democrat that called for Trump assassination just got slapped with Ultima Karma. Missouri State Senator Maria Chappelle Nadal thought that her Facebook comment calling for the assassination of our sitting president would just slide. On Thursday, she deleted it. She was then visited by the Secret Service, even ABC reported on it. Chappelle Nadal tweeted out the Holocaust threat to Jewish Missouri Governor Eric Greitens. Last Friday, Missouri Lieutenant Governor Mike Parsons told Chappelle Nadal to step down. If she didn't, he would work to remove her. Then this happened today. Senate Democratic Caucus Leader Senator Gina Walsh issued the following statement. Senator Democratic Caucus Gina Walsh issued the press stating that Chappelle Nadal's committee would be removed on Tuesday. Share this if you think this woman should have been fired a long time ago for these comments. She is calling for the assassination of the head of her government. Get this out there.